Hello everybody, welcome to The Mild Rumpus, coming at you live from the House of Flimsy, my dilapidated one-bedroom apartment that is filled with books and noise. Today we're going to be looking at all of the books I plan on reading during the month of May. I don't know what your April was like, but mine was very much a mixed bag when it came to reading. I found some wonderful books like James and Wandering Stars, but then I also read a couple of two-star reads back to back that kind of put a damper on the whole month and made it feel as though it was a very mediocre month of reading, even though in reality it was not. I found some great books, but I'm very hopeful for the month of May because I'll be participating in the Horror Mayhem event, which if you don't know what that is, basically we're just going to read a bunch of horror books. And I love that genre and I've been wanting to read some horror books and this is the perfect excuse. So I feel like May is when I'm going to find my mojo again. And I've got a stack of books here that are scary good and I cannot wait to devour them. There are four prompts for the Horror Mayhem event and those are local, movie, classic, and contemporary. So for local horror, I chose a book by an author and playwright that lives and works here in New York City. And the book is also set in New York City and that is Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. Now, Nat Cassidy wrote a book a couple of years ago called Mary, a... An Awakening of Terror. And I really did enjoy that book. So I've been looking forward to reading this one and Horror Mayhem gave me the perfect excuse. So um, I'll read the back of the book, tell you what it's about. Anna and Reed needed a lucky break. The horrifically complicated birth of their first child has left Anna paralyzed, bitter and struggling with mobility, with her relationship with Reed and with resentment for her baby. That's about to change with the words any New Yorker would love to hear, affordable housing lottery. They've won an apartment in the Deptford, one of Manhattan's most revered buildings with beautiful vistas of Central Park and stunning architecture. Reed dismisses disturbing events and Anna's deep unease and paranoia as the price of living in New York. People are odd, but he can't explain the needle-like bite marks on the baby. <laughs> Speaking of needles, the film adaptation of this next book scared the bejesus out of me. The thing is, I didn't even know it was based on a book until just a few weeks ago. And that movie and the book is Audition. In this gloriously over-the-top tale, a widower who has lived alone with his son since his wife died seven years ago decides that it is time to remarry. Since he's a bit rusty when it comes to dating, a filmmaker friend proposes that he stage an audition for a movie he never intends to produce in order to cast the perfect woman as his bride. Only one of the applicants catches his attention, a striking young ballerina with a mysterious past. Blinded by his infatuation, he discovers too late that she is a far cry from the innocent young woman he imagined her to be. For the classic horror prompt, I decided to go with Frankenstein, but I found this really cool edition put out by Vintage that has two different versions of the novel. The first one is the earliest known draft by Mary Shelley and only Mary Shelley. Working from the earliest surviving draft of Frankenstein, Charles E. Robinson presents two versions of the classic novel as Mary Shelley originally wrote it and a subsequent version clearly indicating Percy Shelley's amendments and contributions. Now you might be asking yourself, who is Percy Shelley? Well, it says down here in the bottom, at 16, Mary Shelley began a romance with the great English poet, Percy Shelley, marrying him in 1816, and after his untimely death in 1822, devoted herself to editing and promoting his works. Did you know that? I didn't. For the first time, we can hear Mary's soul voice, which is much more colloquial, fast-paced, and sounds more modern than what readers have known up until now. We can also see for the first time the extent of Percy Shelley's contribution, some 5,000 words out of 72,000, and his stylistic and thematic changes. His occasionally florid prose is in marked contrast to the directness of Mary's writing. Interesting, too, are Percy's suggestions to humanize the monster, thus shaping the major themes of the novel as we read it today. With these two new versions of Frankenstein, we are allowed an exciting new perspective on one of literature's greatest works. This next book felt like the perfect pick for contemporary horror and a great companion piece to Frankenstein. In fact, the blurb on the cover says, 
brilliant and bizarre, a modern Frankenstein, and that is Monstrilio. After her son dies, a mother carves out a small piece of his lung to save for herself. Acting on fierce maternal instinct and the dubious logic of an old folktale, she nurtures the lung until it gains sentience, growing into the carnivorous little Monstrilio she keeps hidden within the walls of her decaying childhood home in Mexico City. But despite her best efforts to turn the monster she created into a man, Monstrilio's innate impulses threaten to destroy his fragile second chance at life. And wouldn't you know it, the public library came through yet again with another contemporary book I've been wanting to read, Diavola. Anna has only two rules for the Pace family destination vacations, tread lightly and survive. It isn't easy when she's the only one in the family who doesn't quite seem to fit in. Her twin brother, Benny, goes with the flow so much he's practically dissolved, and her older sister, Nicole, is so used to everyone falling in line that Anna often ends up in trouble for simply asking a question. Mom seizes every opportunity to question her life choices, and Dad, when not reminding everyone who paid for this vacation, just wants some peace and quiet. The gorgeous remote villa in Italy seems like a perfect place to endure so much family togetherness until things start going off the rails. The strange noises at night, the unsettling warnings from the local villagers, and the dark, violent past of the villa itself. Jennifer Thorne skewers all too familiar family dynamics in this sly, wickedly funny vacation gothic. Beautifully unhinged and deeply satisfying, Diavola is a sharp twist on the classic haunted house story exploring loneliness, belonging, and the seemingly inescapable bonds of family mythology. Hmm. So that's everything that I have on my Horror Mayhem TBR. However, these are not the only books that I plan on reading. I do have another stack here that I'm calling my Maybe This Time TBR pile. These are the books that have slipped through the cracks on previous months. Books that I would still like to get to, like Martyr, Twice Lost, A Passage to India, and Travels with My Aunt. I would love to get to at least one of these this month. It might happen, it might not. My main priority is reading as many scary and disturbing books as possible. I'm probably gonna need therapy by the time this month is over, um, but hopefully you won't. And you know, let me know what you're reading. Put it down there in the comments. And while you're down there, feed that algorithm, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, tell a friend. Uh, what, what, what is there left to say? As always, I wish you all the best. Don't get too scared out there. And um, until I see you, happy reading.